think about more of the performance and not think about the outcome and that just helps me to perform a lot better and just being in a house and being in that situation where you know you could only you know focus on yourself and have your thoughts to kind of linger on and having certain things you had to change about yourself it, it helped a lot and uh you know i think it, it came out for the best and for you, Kelvin, what's it been like coming all the way out from Yuma? Mm -hmm. You were a bail bondsman out there. Yeah. And now you're to this point. You're the youngest guy in Ultimate Fighter history to be fighting in the finale that could possibly become the Ultimate Fighter. What's the experience been like for you? Uh, you know, obviously, it's been a great one. Um, this is obviously a dream come true. You know, I'm, I'm from Yuma. It's, it's Nobody knows where Yuma is. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I'm coming from, from a place that uh you know you don't really uh, get to achieve uh your dreams man and i'm living my dream and it's and it's a blessing so i realized that when you were um i guess just first brought into the world calvin that you fought through adversity from the very beginning you've always been a fighter that you had meningitis um as a baby and i guess that experience and being i guess the man of the house with your family has got you into wrestling and mm -hmm. then from there you proceeded to follow mma when did you start with the wrestling and how much has all of everything that you've been through really gone into becoming the person that you are as a fighter uh yeah i started wrestling when i was like uh 11 um or 12 um and you know that 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 really taught me a lot of discipline and 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 hard work, and that's what wrestling is all about: is discipline and hard work. And um, you know, also my my family and I we've been through through not to not to get too personal or anything like that, but um, you know, we've been through through uh, a lot of hardship and and stuff. So I've had to grow up kind of fast and mature pretty fast. So um, that's made me who I am now. And Uriah, you met with some adversity upon moving into this country that kind of brought out the fighter spirit in you. You came from Jamaica to the States and you said that you were bullied a lot. How much did that really fuel you coming in as a fighter mentally? <sighs> um, to be honest, uh, w with the whole bullying thing, it happened at the given time and it was just something that I, I said and I guess I just took that story and and ran with it, but it, it does inspire me to know that I can help someone that you know has been bullied before to to kind of come out of that dark spot and to have that motivation that where they are right now they're not happy and given the fact that they see what I did they can too can be inspired by it. But you know at the given time again it sucked. There's nothing that I could have done, but I'm just happy. You know I felt I feel proud that God you know has uh, been watching over me and giving me the opportunity to do this and I'm just trying to run with it and take it far uh, you guys mentioned Chael earlier uh, what was it like because there, there's this perception of Chael uh, you know but he's really not like that we know the type of mm. person Chael Sonnen is was was that a new experience to you as the type of person he was you're not used to him being yeah. you know the very abrasive in your face type of character where he's not really like that yeah. What, does that you really your thoughts of him at first when you walked into the show? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, I would I would have thought that he would have, uh, you know, played up to his character that we see you know on on camera and stuff. But no, um, the 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 Chael Sonnen that you guys see on the show is the real Chael Sonnen. You know, he's he's a smart guy, very very intelligent, and, and I have a lot of respect for him, man, for 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 being there for us, man. He was always there for us. Would you say he's better meant uh, as a mental coach or uh, as an actual physical coach? Because that was one of the things you like. I saw was listening to some of the things that he was saying to to you, Uriah, and to you, Kelvin, and I was inspired. I mean, I was get, getting ready to walk off my couch and go hit the gym right away. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he, he will do that to you. He'll do, he'll yeah, yeah, yeah. He was definitely a great, great, uh, you know, a mental coach. Um, and 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 the physical aspect of it too you know we they balanced everything pretty well and and you know he was always um he was you know he fired us up before every fight man as you can see as, as you can tell and um got us really mentally prepared and focused for the fight uh, you guys are doing the whole media rounds right now and and you know you've we're together for six weeks on that in the house locked mm -hmm. together as teammates but now you two are fighting in a couple of days has it been tough, you know, being so close to each other right before a fight? I'm sure it's an experience neither one of you has really had to deal yeah. with. Yeah, it's an, it's the first time experience for me. You know, I I, I had a 
pretty good relationship with Uriah in the house. And, um, you know, and I like him, you know, so so I have to create um, some sort of dislike for him. <laughs> in, I do. I have to create it in my head and, and, and believe it in my mind that I don't like him for, fi- <laughs> for 15 minutes. I have to believe it. You're saying that now, but the funniest thing is that, like, before the interview was going ad- going on and, and outside, you guys are hanging out. You're making jokes. No, yeah. You were just doing a freestyle battle. We secretly recorded that whole freestyle. So Uriah Damn. was kicking a beat, and, and, and Kelvin, you gave us the whole Kelvin yeah. G from UAC. You gave us the breakdown, but you guys seem like good friends. No, yeah, we are, definitely. I think what Kelvin's probably trying to say is, you know, when it comes to that time, we have to separate those emotions. We have to put that aside because yeah. it's business. You know, we, we both knew that since day one we possibly have to fight each other yeah. and come fight day since we both made it you know we have to separate those emotions i really don't have anything against him i love the guy and I'm looking forward to training with him after but yeah. it's just that day we just have to kind of put that aside and go out there and bang yeah it, yeah. it is an individual sport and it's a, a, lot it's, of, it's a new experience i've never fought anybody that i like or that i know so uh, it's, it, it's definitely got to be weird and to see you guys so close to each other and yeah. interacting so pleasantly yeah, yeah I'm, I can't wait to see what happens when that cage door locks on Saturday night now, like Kevin throw a punch I'll act like I'm falling <laughs> well that was funny even during the standoff Dana was like are you going to put your hands up guys come on I mean it's, hey, we're teammates no yeah. you know? but uh, Kelvin you, like, Heidi mentioned earlier you're the youngest guy ever on the Ultimate Fighter and you're in the finals do you feel you've got nothing to lose? You, you've already proven a point, or do you still have more to prove? Um, you know, I don't. I don't let myself think that. I I'm here to win that contract. You know, and I'm sure he is too. And 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 that's all I can say f- for that. Yeah. And Uriah, last question for me. I, I know Kelvin's sitting right here. This is your guy you're fighting. But are you a little upset you didn't get to go throw down with Josh? Uh Man, in the beginning, I was, you know, I was a little upset, like, oh, I wanted to smash him. But again, I was explaining to someone earlier, looking back, now it's more like, I guess in the given time, you know, all those emotions and all that kind of surfaced. And I was feeling that. But now it's more like, you know, I'm out of the house. I'm, I'm on a better level in my head. So why should I go back to it? And, you know, with Josh, you know, he had a plan. His plan was to make it to, to the finale. You know, my, my plan was to make it there, too. I just wanted to fight whoever. I didn't care. But he was like, all right, let me just do this, do this, and this. We both had the same goal, but it was just, you know, we walked different paths. So I really don't really have anything against him. You know, I'm sure he's a good guy. I'm sure he's a good guy in his own way. But, you know, for the time that we were in the house, you know, with nothing else to do but living with people you got to fight, yeah, shit's going to happen. And, you know, stuff is going to surface, and you're not going to like people. But, again, now I have a better sense of it. And, you know, I've always had that mature level to kind of break away from things and try to look at it in different ways to make the best of it. That's what I'm doing. You're right. You, you touched a minute ago. You said uh, you knew you might have to fight each other. And you kind of seem distance a lot of time in the show. Like almost not standoff. It's just you separated yourself from people like the Hooters incident. And, and one of the things you said was it was you're laughing. Did something else? Was that different than it was uh, shown on, uh, on camera? Well, man, how do I say this again? I was pretty much cutting weight because, you know, I had to. At the ah. fight, I think, a couple of days. I was miserable. I gotta be honest, I was miserable. And it's freaking Hooters, man. I was fucking chicken. <laughs> freaking chicken. <laughs> chicken and all that stuff. So I didn't want to be there. And at the time, again, you know, uh, to not be able to be on the same level with Josh, you know, he pretty much said, oh, let's, let's all take a picture. I'm like, I don't take a picture of you, dude. So it was a combination of that and other things. I didn't want it. And, of course, the camera just happened to capture that moment. So I can't do anything about it. But, you know what? You're going to have a lot of people looking at you certain ways. Like what you said about the Chael thing, or how you think that Chael's this type of person. Yeah, I thought Chael was, you know, that's how he really was. Because when you see it like that on TV, you're forced to believe it. But unless you really know the person, you take the time to hang out with them, then you get to know the real Chael. And I've gotten to know the real Chael. And he's nothing like what I saw. You know, he's a great guy, even right. off camera, too. Right. So it's whatever. A lot of people were talking, a lot of the, your teammates were saying that during sparring, you know, you went hard on everyone. <laughs> and what I was wondering is that, is that just how you spar? You know, you just go hard? Or was it kind of like you came in with this tournament that you might fight every single person, teammate or opponents? You could end up fighting them like you are going to fight your teammates. Yeah. And you kind of wanted to go in there and just send a message like, hey, th- you're getting yourself into a world of hurt. Well, I wasn't trying to send any message. I was just sparring. Uh, one of my biggest fault that I always do I used to do this back home I would always go easy I was always try to feel the person out and, and then I always get clipped and 
I don't, it's always happened to me. So, you know, then I would step my game up. But coming here, I was like, all right, these guys are awesome. These guys are all great. So let me pretty much step my game up. And I didn't know I was going through hard. It was more of like, all right, I'm in the zone. I'm in the moment. If you told me, hey, man, let's line up a little bit. Hey, I ain't got no problem doing that. But it was just the mindset I had at the time. I was so, you know, very focused and into it that I wasn't trying to hurt anybody, but I was just stepping my game up. And I guess it just came out, you know, a bad way. But it's a tournament, man. I look at it as a tough tournament. So why would you even complain about anything? Was that a pun on words, a tough tournament? <laughs> I just got that. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. That no, but, but speaking of sparring now, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You guys are such buddies right now. I'm gonna stir it up a little this bit. Guy, man. I know, right? No, you know, Chael said actually, you guys are very intimate with each other. You know, <clears throat> you know each other. You know your strengths and your weaknesses. You've trained as teammates. You sparred a lot. And Chael said last night in the episode, he said during the sparring sessions, it was pretty even across the board. So now I want to get your own personal opinions, your own take on how those sparring sessions went down and if it was kind of even, if you felt you were more dominant or, or what you gleaned from the other person in those in those sparring sessions. Against each other? Yes. <clears throat> this guy's good. <laughs> <laughs> Put you on the spot there. Um, I, I know Kelvin is, is, is strong, man. I, I roll with them, you know, uh, Wrestling is is amazing. His hands has been improving since you know he he since his first fight. I can't really you know underestimate anything because it's hard to pick out any holes in his game because he's so good at anywhere, man. You take him to the floor, he'll fight you. He'll stand up, he'll fight you. He's just constantly growing, and because he's young, you know he has that mindset where he's like whatever, you know he'll go out there and he'll give a hundred percent without even trying because he's that good and he's on that level and it's something. Hard to explain, and I don't even think he realized how good he is. And I give him props for that. But, you know, come game day, you know, I'm just going to go out there and have fun because for me, I keep saying that because that's the only time I can be myself when I have fun, you know. I, I can't really say I'm better than this, I'm better than that than because I don't really know the outcome. I really don't. Are you going to get into politics? Because that was a very <laughs> diplomatic. Like, I was trying to get some dirt, but that was like a well-timed diplomatic like answer. like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Chill told right. me that. Kelvin, don't let me down. <laughs> yeah, you learned that from Chael. Huh? <laughs> Kelvin, don't let me down, man. Throw, throw some throw some, throw some uh, sticks don't on the fire. It. Don't do it. Uh, no, I mean, nothing <laughs> nothing too crazy. You know, um, we'd go in there and we'd bang. You know, some of the guys, they'd say, oh, he's going too hard. Well, that's that's fine. You know, I would... I would go in and step step in for those guys and and, and go hard with with that's what's Uriah. Up. I think that's how we got along. <laughs> yeah. So, well. so so we went in there, we banged, man, and and he obviously he got a little bit better on the on the stand up, and uh, and um, yeah, man, we we would go in there and we'd bang. It it was, it was nothing too crazy, you know. I take him down. Uh, he was he had good takedown defense for sure, and um, yeah, man, he's he's good. He's strong, athletic. Powerful and you know, there's, there's nothing else that I can say about that. <laughs> you know, what's funny is you're saying you re referring to going hard as banging. You know, they would like to bang or bang. <laughs> no, but it's just so funny because it reminds me of the last season where we had you know the clown like let me bang, bro, oh, let me yeah. bang. And this season was so <laughs> far from that, and you guys are so far from that. It just took me down memory lane for a second to an unpleasant memory, but then I come back <laughs> to you guys. And I'm like, oh, this is what the Ultimate Fighter should be about. Yeah, it's competition, but, man. Right. But I want to switch it up too, Kelvin. You are Bale Bondsman. Now I know that's not quite a bounty hunter, but when I see here Bale Bondsman, I think a dog the bounty hunter. Yeah. I think of running and gunning. <laughs> Give me some story. I know you got some kind of crazy Bale Bondsman story. Uh nothing too crazy. You know, I live in in, in Yuma. It's a small town. You know, um, ninety five percent of the people do what they're supposed to do. You know, they go to court, they pay their fines or whatever. But then there's that five percent that that you know either don't go to court or they don't pay what they're supposed to pay and and some people there's two two brothers they skipped out on on court so um what were their names uh i don't remember their names all right let's give them a name like the menendez brothers okay the menendez so brothers. so the menendez you get the call yo kelvin well, all of a sudden they gotta down. be mexican bro. All right, all right. i'm about to say <laughs> the same thing <laughs> like the, the jenkins brothers <laughs> <laughs> i'm just playing man okay so the jenkins no, kelvin, no i like the down. menendez brothers okay switch it back Kelvin, it's going down. <laughs> the Melendez brothers just just bounced. They just skipped. Get on them. All happens? right. Was that so a rap? <laughs> 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 That's how I was rapping. <laughs> so we called up a team of of, uh, of Bell Recovery agents, and um, bras for the acronym. Bras. Bras. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bell Recovery agents. Bras. <laughs> yeah, bras. We called up the bras, and then um, <laughs> the the girlfriend actually set them up. 
The girlfriend of one of the brothers. Scandalous. Yeah. So the girlfriend set them up at a gas station. They were gonna they were gonna stop at a gas station to put to put gas in. And um, when they stopped at the gas station, the girlfriend went in to pay for the gas. And uh, there's about three vehicles. We all rolled up on them. We took out our guns. We we're like, get on the ground or get out of the car, get out of the car, you know, get on the ground. And, um, you know, no, no shots fired or anything like that. But that was the craziest that I've been in so far. Those crazy ass Melendez brothers. Yeah, <laughs> Mendez. Right. Yeah, because they were they were um, <laughs> they they were kind of considered dangerous, you know. So we we didn't know what to expect. Nice. And you're right. Have you ever had any crazy jobs? Uh, no, not really. I've been normal so far. What's the normal job? An uh, accountant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did uh, you file your SR twenty two? No, I worked at Models. Uh, Which shit. Models? It's like a sporting good store. Oh, uh, so it's, it's an East Coast thing. I don't know yeah. these things. Uh, you probably shouldn't have said that. But yeah, it's it's a sporting goods store. Uh, what else? Did I? I was a photographer assistant <laughs> for a while. I guess probably maybe it's a little funny. I, we've done a lot of like uh, uh, weddings and a lot of uh, you know photo shoots and stuff. And I just remember one time we did this wedding. I was the only black guy there. It was so <laughs> weird. And it was so bright. I'm like, and there was you know food and stuff on the table. I'm like. Man, I bet you're just waiting for me to grab that watermelon and look at my <laughs> like, Come on, we're going to wait for him to do it. We're going to wait for him to do it. So maybe that was the only funny moment I ever had. I don't know what's funnier, the fact that you said it was the that it was very bright because everyone was so white, or, or that you were the watermelon. Oh, I told my boss. Me and my boss was cool, man. I'm like, man, is it bright here with me? What's going on? You know, but it was cool. It was just weird. I was like, bro, I'm the only brother up in here. What's going on? <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much it. You're right. Coming into this season, uh, Dana tweeted out about this mystery beast. This there's a guy in the season. He's a beast. He knocks out everyone. It's the worst knockout I've seen. And you know, since then, you know, Dana's definitely been on the Uriah hype train. I mean, every every <laughs> fight, he's train. you know, yeah, no, he's like he's your biggest you know supporter <laughs> proponent. You know, he's sitting next to Carlos Khan and like this guy's so nasty. You know, and, and, and it's coming into this you know the biggest fight of your career with with all the expectations with everything you've done. Do you feel a lot of pressure? Like, and not just pressure to win, but pressure pressure to perform to do to do something in devastating fashion well that was always been a, a problem you know i felt that i always had to perform a certain way people tell me oh you're good you're this you're, you're you have this amazing da 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 and you know i i didn't see it especially for a long time i just couldn't see what anybody was saying and that's why i brought it to chill i'm like you know chill people tell me i'm this good but i can't see it or why can't i see it and he just brought up a couple of things that made me understood you know what was the missing link and what was the problem and I know right now a lot of people are saying stuff and it's like, oh, what's going to be next? You know, but I really don't have anything to live up to. I, I'm i not living up to anybody's expectation. I go in that ring by myself. I'm leaving by myself. I'm not going to do this forever. And in a given time, I'm just going to go out there and do what I love to do, you know, perform. If I win, great. If I lose, still great. I, I look at it as a growing experience. So I don't feel like I can lose anything. So I really don't really care what anybody thinks. In a good way. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's the great thing when you're competing. Uh, you know, the last thing you need to be thinking about is whatever exactly, you're thinking. Exactly. Unnecessary pressure. And you and know you know it. what? The people that love you are still going to love you afterwards. Exactly. Absolutely. Kelvin, same question, but di- the opposite spectrum. I mean, uh, you came into this. You were the second to last picked. Every fight you won was considered an upset. You know, you beat Bub McDonald's, who was one of the, the the favorites going in. You take him out. You take out Colin Hart, who was another strong person for 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 uh, John Jones's team. They thought he was a favorite, and you you end with Josh Saman, who everyone thought it was going to be you know the 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 Uriah Saman showdown for the finale. Uriah so Saman. literally, you've upset everyone. And coming into this again, you know, you've got Uriah, who was the was the the talk of the town for this whole season, and it seems like there's no pressure on you for this fight. Do you feel like that? Um, you know, I put the pressure onto myself, really. Um, I really want this and I really want to win. So that that's the, the that's on the state is is this is this UFC contract and that's what I ultimately want, man. Um but other than that I I, I, I don't feel the pressure, no. And, and and I feel I feel fine. I've already um I I'm living my dream right now, man, and I couldn't be any happier. Nice. Well, guys, we have to get ready to wrap it up, but I do have a couple questions for the both of you before we do get going. First of all, Uriah, I had read that you actually learned about mixed martial arts and fighting <sighs> from watching Van Damme movies <laughs> and playing Tekken. Yes. Real yeah, quick, you, you told me that. Actually, I met you at the fight to get in the house, and I was waiting in line to get in the bathroom. 
And you came up a weight line, and I was like, "Man, you had great footwork. Did you box growing up?" And you're like, "No, no, I never boxed." I said, "Where'd you Where'd you learn this stuff?" And you said, "Oh, Van Dam movie." <laughs> and I'm like, "Either this guy's serious, or he's just messing with me." I didn't know what to say, but you just fought. You looked amazing. I wasn't gonna say anything. Yeah. It's almost like Karate Kid, where he learns um, how to do karate from the, the book. wax on wax yeah. off. Yeah. Until he finds, <laughs> until he found his Mr. Miyagi. Well, I didn't have a chance to to really do martial arts as a kid. You know, in Jamaica, there was no like really good surroundings of it. I saw it on TV. I'm like, oh, wow, that would be great to learn. And for me, that was my way of learning. I would just emulate it. I would just look at it and do it. But coming here, you know, I was fascinated with with, with, uh, with that fighting game, Tekken. And, you know, I've always been into martial arts. So it was just a combination. I would just remember playing. I would just pause it, and I would get up and do it. And no one would see me, of course. But I would just practice <laughs> it over and over and over again. And, you know, it was my way of learning. And then when I finally got into martial arts, it just made it such an easy transition, and it was just so hard for people to figure out because it was like, what the hell? Where does that come from? You didn't expect it. And, you know, they, I couldn't tell the teachers right off the bat where I learned it from. They were like, would you fight before? I was like, no. You trained before? I'm like, no. I couldn't say, hey, man, I stay at home and play Tekken all day. But it helped me a lot, and I think, you know, one of the best ways to learn is visually. You, someone could say something, but it'll go through your ear. But if you watch something, you'll pick it up a lot faster. And it was just the coolness of it. I just loved the fact that it was just so cool. And, man, if I can do that, I'll be awesome. And that kind of gave me the opening for it. You know it. who, interestingly enough, also did that uh, with their career was, I believe, John, John Jones. John Jones, yeah, I looked look up see YouTube. Do. That's there what you he go. called it. Look, see, do. <laughs> who see, do? Who, who was you your Tekken character? Jin? Jin. I knew it. I knew it. When you thought about the Tekken movie, it's got to be Jin. It was Jin and right. a bunch of them. All right, that's what's guy. up. And for you, Kelvin, again, we touched on how close you are with your family, and you spoke a lot about your mother on the show. Uh, what would be the first thing that you would do for your family if you do win the Ultimate Fighter? I'm going to Hawaii. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> no Disneyland? <laughs> <laughs> Disney's over. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, we we... We still have p bills to pay. I guess Take I, would have to, I would pay the bills, and that's all I can do. Buy 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 her a new car or something. You know, hey. do something awesome. nice. What about for yourself? For myself, get a new uh, phone, bro. Get a new phone. <laughs> it's all cracked. He does have a flip phone, right? Am I right? No, I, no, he got I a smart I, 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 I am over. I looked over. I thought you had one of the, you know, the. <laughs> no, no. For myself, I'll probably travel around a little bit. You know, I'll, you know. That's it. You know, I'll probably travel. Um, can I come? Just yeah, you can okay. come. Nice. And um, <laughs> <laughs> and just enjoy myself, you know, and then um, come back home and, and get ready for the next one. Awesome. I, I just gotta say that it's a very interesting story because we're both coming from totally different routes, and mm -hmm. I feel we're both living out our dream. Yeah. And <clears throat> you know, they're giving me the hype, and Kevin has just been pulling off a lot of upsets. So it's like, wow. It's so different, and where's it gonna meet? So I'm, I'm very <laughs> excited about this, man. I can't wait. Another cool that thing part. is that you were the second pick. You were the second to last pick. It's just mm -hmm. the way it worked out. It's destiny. Yeah. Well, both Team Son and guys here ready to meet up in the final. That's gonna be April 13th at the Mandalay Bay Event Center, where we see Uriah Hall versus Kelvin Gastelum, and one of them will come out the Ultimate Fighter for the season 17 finale. Let's get a double knockout. <laughs> yeah, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. <laughs> Spin kick and uh, overhand. That, at the same that time. That video Bam. with both of those guys yeah, knocking shit. Shoney Carter. Shoney Carter is the best thing. To, he was the referee of that. He's the best part. What? <laughs> he didn't know what to do. He's like, uh. <laughs> yeah. But we do have to wrap it up here, guys. So thank you so much for thank coming on for the show. We very thank much you guys for having it. us. Thank you. Thank you. Stay black. Thank you.